Hello, I want to place a few thoughts on womanhood, especially after we celebrated the Women's Day recently. For some of us, a Women's Day is not really a happy day. Recently, I had been to two meetings to speak to two groups of women. One was a group of women from a fishing village. The next was a group of women yesterday. And uh, the first group of women, I asked them in Tamil, how many of you are happy that you are born a woman? Many of them said that they are not happy that they are born a woman. The second group of women, it was a mix of, it was a mix of educated and a few non-educated women in this church. And there again I asked them, how many of you are happy that you are a woman? And some of them said no. Today, that which defines our woman is what the world defines. She is judged by the way she looks. She is judged by the carrier she has. She is judged by her color. She is judged by her uh, brilliance. Very often have you noticed what people think about us is what we think about ourselves. When someone looks at you and says, hey, you're pretty, then you feel you're pretty. If someone looks at you and says, hey, you're not smart, then you feel that you're not smart. If someone comments about your color, hey, you're dark, then the person feels, yes, I'm dark, I'm not good looking. Sometimes verbal abuses from your father or from your husband or from your brother, those things also hurt us a lot. I still remember in a Bible study where a young girl, a smart girl, a good-looking girl, a go-getter, a college student, she was actually doing extremely well. When you look at her outside, you will look at her and you will know that she's a very smart girl. But then suddenly during the Bible study, she just made a confession. She said, you know, I hate to address God as Father. I can address Him as a Savior, as the Lord, as the Almighty God, but never as a father. So I asked her, why? She said, you know, when I was growing up, my parents expected me to be born as, as a boy, but I was a girl. And more than that, my father was disappointed that I was just not a boy, but also I was born a girl, and that too a girl who is dark. So, all the growing up years of my life, each time I would try to bring in my achievements, my marks or something which I had done, he would always put me down. So for me, when I came to know the Lord Jesus as my savior, and when I see in the Bible that he is called as a father, I could never address him as a father. Sometimes the bad memories of the way we've been raised up, you know, that affects us a lot. But you know something? You need to understand that it is God who defines our womanhood because He made us as a woman. We live in times where if you ask somebody, who are you? That person will say, oh, I'm just a housewife. We've come to a place that a woman as a mom or as a wife is considered much lesser than a woman who is a carrier. What a tragedy. But let me tell you today that it is God who defines your womanhood. He made you as a woman. Fighting for women's rights is okay. It's not bad. Provided you don't challenge the order of God who made you a woman. You do not have a choice over you being born a woman, but you sure have a choice of being a godly woman. Because a godly woman is a beautiful woman. She who fears the Lord is a beautiful woman. May I quote to you someone whom I have admired all along, a missionary stateswoman, Elizabeth Elliot. She says, the fact that I'm a woman does not make me a different kind of a Christian. But the fact that I'm a Christian makes me a different kind of a woman. 
that defines your womanhood friends because god defines your womanhood you can be a bold confident woman of god fulfilling the role of god by opposing the order of god you're not going to be happy at all but when you just accept the will of god and be the woman god wants you to be no matter what challenges you face god is with you in the journey he will never leave you nor forsake you what others speak about you or what others tell you does not define you you are made in the image of god and god looks at you and says my child you are beautiful we were not created as a knee jerk reaction for men we were created as help meet for men and when you fulfill that role you will be the most happiest person there is one beautiful story of a woman in the bible whom jesus went all out to meet her she was not someone whom the world wanted to know or associate with her story is featured in john chapter 4 whatever she did caused her to be ostracized from the society she lived in she came in the afternoon to take water at the well but jesus met her he had an appointment with her she knew she would be there he loved enough to go after her her life was not something which the world would have been proud of or or her neighbors or her family would have been proud of but you know something the lord jesus opened her eyes to see that he is the only one who can satisfy her she was looking at love at the wrong places and god opened her eyes to see that he alone can satisfy she was convicted of her sins all her wrong doing that is what happens when you come into the presence of the holy and living god those who have encountered him could never be the same again and he had the power to change their lives what a beautiful story it ended up with her going back to her village and say, say come and meet the man who has told everything about me not a very fancy testimony but the encounter with the lord jesus christ helped her to accept who she is and gave her the hope to change her life that is the power of god that confronts us today he is the same he created you with a purpose don't settle for anything less than who you are you see we live in a world where we, we say we don't need men but we need men i'm so happy to have a man recording this that's my husband we are called to compliment each other let us submit to the will of god and be the woman god wants you to be and i'm sure you will say i'm glad i'm a woman god bless you